I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> guys welcome back to my channel i'm justin davis and today we get to review one of the world's best fishing drones for 2020 and it's no joke because i am from cape hatteras north carolina it is one of the world's premier fishing destinations for marlin offshore fishing and deep fishing thousands if not millions of people go there to fish and get their catch to bring home but today if you're looking for a capable drone that is usable in salt water or fresh water. Uh, this is probably the drone for you because it is a great price. It's under around $2,000. It comes with salt water coated motors that you can submerge. It also has a variety of different attachments. It has a bait hook release on it as well as a low camera and a 4K option, but it does float also. And if it goes into the water and it flips upside down, it can flip itself back over. The previous version of this particular drone did not do that. And this one pretty much has all the bells and whistles that you're looking for for this price. Now I have reviewed thousands of drones on the internet and I have shown you several different types of drones including STD drones, race drones, as well as various versions of fishing drones. So this is my third fishing drone review on the channel. Uh, I've been doing these type of reviews since uh, uh, probably about five or six years now. And this is special for me because they finally got all the kinks worked out. And this one is way better than the original Slash Drone. Um, the Slash Drone 1, 2, and now we have the 3 Plus. So we're going to check out some of the specs on this drone. I'm going to show you some of the different attachments that you can get. And we're going to talk about prices as well because you guys don't want to go too deep into this. But depending on what type of fishing you're doing, whether it's off the beach, you just want to take your hook out over the breakers, or off of the charter boat, you can land it to the side and gaff it and bring it up. It is really, really tough and durable. And best of all, it flies good. So let's go ahead now. Let's check out the specs, some of the accessories that come along with it. And after that, we'll take it outside and test it in Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Here we go. So let's check out what you get with the new Splash Drone 3 Plus. You do get a better flight time around 23 minutes. You get better seals, new color options, and the power flip option, which I love in case you flip over in the water. New salt water coated motors, 3510s, and twist on and off carbon locking props, which are super easy to get on. Four 40 amp ESCs are inside this sealed up frame, and we have a new GPS sealed membrane, which is really, really nice. This is a little more robust than the older one, and it has thumb twist locks which I love. The older one had screwdriver bolts on the very top and you had to have a screwdriver handy to take the top off to put your battery in and out of the quad. So this is much easier to get in and access your battery compartment and get to the flight controller. It also has GLONASS GPS on this one which is dual GPS. It's all sealed up inside that top mount right there with a little bit of foam to protect it and it has the S3 flight controller. It is updatable you can use the assistant software to update it with the USB port. It also has options in for power in, GPS A1 and A2 there. It also has LED options and a receiver port there. On the other side, you have motor ports one through four there for the quad setup, that's typical, but you also have extra ports in here, five, six, seven, and eight, if for some reason you wanted an octocopter. Now, the accessories that you can get are the 4K camera and the low light camera with the bait hook release, which is nice. So if you're flying closer to dusk, you can use that. It also has a quick release there for the power and it has one single bolt holding the whole thing on. You have buttons on the bottom of the 4K camera, OK, record, power modes, and you have the sealed up protected SD card slot there with the updatable USB port there for your assistant software, which is super nice. And I gotta say, I really do like the fact that you don't need any tools. If you're out on the beach or on the boat, you don't have to fiddle around with um, unscrewing or using screwdrivers to take these attachments on and off. And the servo that comes along with the bait release is a metal geared servo. So that's not likely to strip out on you. And let me just show you real quickly how easy it is to take it on and off so take off that bolt unscrew that and it's off now I can take my 4k camera slide that up on the post and put this bolt in and now screw this power port in make sure it's nice and firm so no water gets in there and you're all done you're ready to film with your 4k camera 
I gotta say the aluminum looks pretty good on there as well, the aluminum gimbal. And two switches to turn on this transmitter. And now let me show you the switches. It has the bait release switch on the left hand side, kind of convenient to your index finger. Your gimbal dial here for moving your cameras up and down on the pitch axis. You also have a media switch there for video record. If it's up, it's recording, preview, and take photo mode there. Flight mode's on the right hand side for GPS positioning flying. It has a cruise option and it has Addy for no GPS hold flying. You want to take that positioning off and the return to home switch in case you get in trouble it'll come back and land it also has a new option for smooth yaw axis turns so it'll turn the nose slightly left or right for precision filming it's very very smooth and the drone actually turns with that dial it's really neat the right hand side shows the roll axis so you can slowly move the drone left or right on the roll axis and you have a firmware update port for your radio on the bottom as well underneath that port and a pretty robust looking lanyard hook there for your strap and in the back we have a 2s battery that should power this for more than 10 flights it also comes with a balance charger inside the box which is going to charge up your 4s 5200 milliamp batteries just a little bit bigger and now they're hv it also comes with battery leads that plug into your charger and the battery they have retractable sleeves on the main terminals of the battery leads. So you just go ahead and push them in like that. Don't try to remove those plastic sleeves. They're there to protect the leads so you don't short them out. Now you have your balance connector there. Plug in your balance lead there and your XT60 goes into this side of the port. And it takes about 45 minutes to charge up and top off these batteries. Not too bad. You also have a Bluetooth option available for being able to change the software on the drone through the Swell Pro phone app, which is super nice. You also get an extra membrane for your GPS cover on the top of the dome, which is nice, and a pretty decent lander comes along with it. Now let's go ahead and put everything in the case. I just want to show you how nice the case is and how everything fits in there. This is just generally the way I do it. Uh, you can do it differently if you want, but this is what works the best for me. Now these two straps go over the top and everything stays pretty snug in place. I've shipped this across country and I've also traveled with it on airlines. It's a pretty decent case, um, all the way back from the original version. It hasn't changed a whole lot as far as the case goes, but it is very robust and has nice zippers and carrying handles. So let's go ahead now and do the flight test. It's a beautiful sunny day on Cape Hatteras today and we're going to go ahead and take off the dock here in a minute, but I do need to do my pre-flight checklist. I'm gonna go through all the things. I'm gonna make sure that I have my props locked on securely and that our home point is loaded. Give yourself about a minute to a minute and a half to load all of your satellites. You'll see them come up on the screen here. You have full telemetry on this drone, which is nice. So now I know everything is checked out. I have a full GPS satellite home point recorded and I can take off. I am in GPS positioning mode right now. The nice thing about GPS positioning, if you've never flown a drone before with GPS positioning, when you let go of the sticks, it will stop. It will hold its altitude and its position in your airspace, which is really nice. Even when the wind's blowing, it'll still hold its, it'll bite into the wind and hold its space. Now this boat is just coming in. So we got a nice shot with the 4K camera. And I want you to notice how crisp and detailed this video looks. Also, look for jello or stutter in this video. This version of the three axis gimbal, they had a two axis version before. This one is looking way smoother than the original version on the Plus Swell Pro Splash Drone 3. So I'm happy with that. This 3 Plus is getting way better video right off the bat. And the nice thing about flying such a large drone is that this will fly in more environmental conditions, uh, especially around the coast. A lot of times when we're flying out in Cape Hatteras, down in Florida, offshore, different situations around the ocean or water usually tend to have more wind. And the heavier a drone is, the more wind you can fly it in. This will handle quite a bit of wind and today it's not super windy. But the other nice thing about this drone is that I'm really not worried about it falling into the water. If there was some type of failure, component failure on this drone and went in the water, we could just go out and pick it up. That's not a problem. 
And this guy's bringing in a big catch, as you can see, because there are tons of seagulls around. You know when someone's coming into the docks, if they have a ton of birds following the boat in, either they're throwing out their old bait or they've got a ton of fish on the boat. And it looks like they might be loaded down with a big catch. There's a little higher up shot, pretty spectacular. The video seems to be a little bit whited out on certain boats down there. And this looks like a pretty good mid-range type of shot. And the nice thing about this lens on here as well is it doesn't, notice that it doesn't have a ton of fisheye. That's one other thing that I have to comment about because GoPros, um, other drones out there that have sort of fisheye lens, it distorts the horizon a little bit too much for my taste. And this has a really nice flattened out field of view. Now we're just moving on and show you a little more of how much water there actually is around Hatteras Village. It's kind of amazing. I grew up down here. We used to use our little, I guess, pole pushed raft that we would build by hand and take them out into these creeks and around these boat docks. And now let's go ahead and dunk it into the drink and Notice how well the camera handles the water coming off the lens when I come back out of the water. Generally, there's a lot of water still on the lens, and this lens does have a special coating on it. You can also use Rain-X to keep the water off, just a, a thin coat of Rain-X and wipe it off, and that'll get that lens back to clear for you. And throughout the week, as the week progressed, my coating sort of where it wore off. So you're gonna to have to replace that coating every once in a while. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like after it gets a little bit worn off. But let's go ahead and put it down. I wanna take you to another location here just before the sun goes down. The nice thing about this is that you can rinse it off with fresh water and make sure that you keep your battery compartment on. You can wash off the gimbal, all the motors, and just give it a really good rinsing once you get back to the dock or you get home. Try to do it before you leave the beach if you're doing any type of beach fishing. What I do is I carry one of the garden sprayers in my truck out to the beach with me and I spray it off with a garden sprayer. Now we're back out over the Pamlico Sound and this is some really good looking video right here. I have to tell you that I've flown the same exact flight path with the DJI Phantom 4 years ago doing a Cape Hatteras sunset like this and I wanted to do that low to the water shot. It always looks really nice. The lower you can get to the water it just starts to look really cool because you can see all the ripples and the reflections of the sun. All the gradients and the color just looks amazing. But you don't want to get too close because you're worried about hitting the, the water and dumping your drone in the water. And this one, you can take that risk. You can literally go full speed into the water in this drone. Even if it flips over, you can use that riding option and flip it back over. These guys are coming in at the end of the day with their catch. Looks like some storm clouds off in the horizon there. It has a pretty decent sort of range for that camera and here using a little more speed I'm flying in Addy mode just wanted to give you guys an example of how fast this particular drone is it probably does an upwards of 45 miles per hour 45 to 50 miles an hour she's moving moving across the water really nice speed to this drone and this again is one of those shots that I would not attempt with a DJI Phantom or a Mavic Pro because I wouldn't want to put $1,500 into the salt water. You immediately lose it. I've done it before. I had somebody with a kiteboarding kite hit my DJI Phantom Vision Plus. At the current time when he hit it, it was around $1,400 drone ready to fly. And uh, that, that drone didn't get recovered for about two weeks when some windsurfers found it. But it is that golden hour and there's sort of a golden hue over the village right now. You can see Hatteras Harbor Marina down there on the bottom left and Highway 12 through Hatteras Village right here. 
and back out over the sound side. We're just gonna do one last dunk here and it's interesting because the sound is really shallow in spots and that's why everybody runs flat bottom boats out here but look how shallow it is right here. It almost looks like it was less than a foot deep where I went in. And there you can see the water dripping off the lens. And let's try that one more time. Let's go ahead and put it back down. We'll look for some blue crabs. Plop right back in the water. It's just awesome that you can do this with a drone. And I'm telling you guys that Swell Pro is the DJI of waterproof drones. They are the most advanced, well packaged, ready to fly, waterproof salt waterproof drone out there on the planet um, my guy alex over at swell pro is he's a genius and, and these drones have been through various different versions in the last five to six years swell pro has been around for a long time and they really do bring some quality to the fishing market as far as far as if you're looking for a fishing drone this is the one to get in 2020 and it's been updated with all the bells and whistles and a lot of extras that you won't even really notice they've put a lot of R&D into these drones and they're impressive they fly well and I haven't had a single problem with mine just make sure that you seal up everything nice and tight on it um, including your power for your gimbal and on the top where the GPS dome is and you'll have a really good experience fishing with this drone and plenty of attachments to play around with and the bait release guys super awesome i love it it is two thumbs up for me guys take care please do subscribe on the channel and i'll see you on the next one